today's video we are going to fix a couple of bugs and I will show them and then we are going to address how we are going to fix them one by one. The first one I would like to fix is the fact that um, whenever we have a spell on a tooltip and we for example add some potions on top of it, the spell tooltip is still there and you should also still be able to use the potions for attacking as you can see here. actually don't know what happens if we reduce health, I can remember the key, yeah. And press free. Okay, so the potion still works. Uh, however, we are also able to throw a fireball by using the potion. So we need to make sure that this button gets cleared um, and that it shows the right tooltip. So that's the first thing we are going to fix. So the first bug can be fixed fairly easy by opening up the action button script. And inside the set usable function, we have to make sure that we update the tooltip to something new so that we don't show the, the spell after we've put on the health potion. To do that, we simply go to the bottom of the script and say UI manager. That my instance that refresh a tooltip, and we're just going to use my usable as I describable. And there we go. So now the refreshing thing is fixed. However, um, there is something with the usable here. Right now, we're just setting the usables, and we will get an all reference exception in the case of using something that isn't stackable. So we also have to go to this one here and make a property so you can right click on it say quick actions uh, and encapsulate field and then we can go to the usables here and there's one thing we need to do here we need to take make sure when we set the usables we also need to say my usable is equal to value dot peak so when we stack something we also set the usable, um, so we have a reference to something in our in my usable. If we don't add this line of code, we are going to have a null reference exception uh, in a case where we 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 are setting the stack. If, for example, a, a health potion stack, then my usable is not going to be set anywhere. So just to make sure that my usable is set, we also set it when we set the usables. So when you have created this one, you will notice that it has switched out usables with non-capital U with the big one. If you're using an IDE that doesn't replace that, just make sure that you're down here, everywhere you're using it, uh, use the usables with capital U. You can also right click and say rename to my uh, usables. Just make sure that it's easy to see that we're using a property. So you should use that my usables everywhere. So now we save. Let's see if the bug is gone. Let's see here, should we try to put in a spell, there we go, and then we take add a health potion on top, now it uses health potion instead, and let's see, I shouldn't be able to attack with this one anymore, and now you can see nothing happens when I press the, the button here, because I, I, I don't have a spell, so now we are clearing everything and setting up the right usable, so that's the first bug. An other bug we need to fix is the fact that we can make items disappear, so let's see, I open this chest, and I put in some items, let's say these boots. Well, it's fine if I just walk away and come back to the chest, it's still there. But if I close the chest and move away from the chest and back to the chest, then the item is gone. And you will also be able to click on the wrong chest. Let's say here, I have a chest that's closed here. I click on the chest up here and it opens this one. So we, of course we need to make sure that we click on the right item or the right chest before we can open it. The same goes for interacting with, like I can click on the vendor down here to open the chest. It doesn't make sense. So all these bugs are kind of related, so we will fix them now. Okay, so the bug with clicking on the wrong item to open a chest can be fixed in the game manager. Let's find the game manager script. I guess we have something called managers here. And we have a function where we are clicking on something right there. So here we can simply add an extra if statement. And in that if statement, we can simply say, well, if the hit collider game object interactable is the same as the one we are close to, so we can make an and here. Wow. Uh, let's see here. Let's change the language on the keyboard. Give me a sec there. So if our hit dot collider game object get component uh, i interactable. So if that one is the same as the player dot interactable. Wow. Player dot interactable. So we need to be able to access that. So let's go to the player player class there and we should have something called interactable there 
so just right click quick actions and encapsulate the field and rename this one to uh, let's say uh, my interactable then we can go back to the game manager all the way down here and check if the player dot my interactable is the same as the interactable that I'm hitting so remember when the player gets close to a, an enemy that is dead or a, a chest it will set the players my interactable or I interactable when that one is set we can open and close the chest however we also need to make sure that one we click on is the same interactable as the one the player is close to so by writing that little line of code and saving it we should only be able to open the chest by clicking on the actual chest that we're close to so if I stand here and click up here nothing happens but if I click down here it opens and closes now I can click on the window to open this one okay, that's one of the bugs so let's open up our script again so the other one is the fact that we clear items that are not supposed to be cleared we can do that in chest let's see here we have a chest script somewhere right let's just search for it chest script chest there in on the environment okay so we have something called stop interact somewhere there here we can simply check if this open so only if the chest is open we're only going to clear we're only going to do all these things if the chest is already open and with that I think we fixed that bug where we make the items disappear so let's see if I add some random items here go and we put these bags inside our inventory and I close this I walk away go up here and open that it's fine go back here and they're still there so now they're not disappearing when we walk away from the chest a simple fix the next two bugs we have to fix has something to do with the vendor so if we open up our vendor and you'll see that there are five boots and I go to the next page it's also five potions but in reality these potions are unlimited so we're never removing the amount here the quantity here when we switch page pages as you can see now we only have four potions even though we bought a like a pair of boots the other thing is if I click on the vendor I get extra items every time I click on the vendor I get more pages so we need to make sure we don't get more pages by clicking on him again and the same goes for if you close it down and open it again they get we add extra pages so we need to clear the items as well so to do that we open up our script and let's fix the quantity first I think the quantity is quantity is fixed inside the uh, button script the vendor button that is we're checking if it's unlimited and then we simply just make an ill statement and say that the quantity the text is equal to string dot empty if it's not unlimited so they should make sure to set it back to uh, empty if the item on the next page on the same slot is um, is unlimited so let's try to save and give it a go So when I open up the window, there's five there, and there's nothing written on the potions. So that bug is fixed. Now we need to make sure that the bug with um, clicking on the vendor multiple times isn't possible to make. So we can make a property here, and I want to make a bool called is open. So let's see here. We're going to do like this. If it isn't open, if it's open, it's false. Then we do all this and we say that is open is true. And down here we do the opposite. So if it is open, then we do all this and we say that is open is false. And sorry, don't mind this line of code. It's something I played around with. It's nothing you have. Sorry about that. I forgot to remove it so please don't get confused about that you should have a stop interact function that looks like this now so the only thing we have added compared to what you have is this line of code instead of just closing the window 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 and up here we simply added this open okay so the next thing we have to do is to go to the window window so here we need to make sure that when we create our pages 
we have to clear the pages first. So pages, oh, pages dot clear. So we're simply just clearing them before we create them to make sure we you don't have any new pages. So let's try to test it like this. We can play the game. And if I move down here, talk to the vendor, move away and come back, I still have the same amount of pages. As you can see, I can move away and come back all the time. And if I right click on him, it doesn't make new pages. So there's one problem here. If I right click on him, close it up here, I'm unable to reopen it. So the reason that I'm unable to reopen it is because if we go to the canvas and find the vendor there, you can see the close button is calling the window window dot close function. So it calls the function down here. And this function never does anything with the is open. So because of this, it thinks that it's still open so I cannot reopen the window after I close it on the button. So what do we need to do then? Well, our vendor window needs to have a reference to the vendor that it is showing the items from at the moment. So we're going to make a vendor a reference. And where do we set it? We can set it when we let's say when we open the window. So every time we open a window, we just tell the window window that this is the vendor that you're using right now. just like that so now the window knows what vendor it's using to show the items and because of this we can when we close this say vendor dot is open false wow wow <laughs> what am I trying to do vendor dot is open is false there we go okay I got a like a little confused there so when we close it, we make sure that we set this one to false and just for good measure set the vendor to null down here so that we don't have reference to anything. Um, yeah. And then we go back and we test it. Oh, I have compilers, do I? Let's see here. Oh, compiler there. Oh, yeah. So this one needs to take this in because this is the vendor and the window open function now wants the vendor with it and the vendor can just pass in itself. Then we save and go back here. Let's go, let's go, there we go. I click on him, close there, click on him again to open. And there's only two pages. I can buy an item, close and open. The item is still bought and doesn't show up on the next page. There we go. So that are those that that were those a uh, vendor box. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page. So please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.